The multiplicity of an eigenvalue is the number of times that it shows up as a root of the characteristic polynomial. So if you remember, the, the characteristic polynomial, this is uh, of, of the matrix A, is PA, and it's the determinant of A minus lambda i. So this is a polynomial. It can have whatever degree it wants to have. Um, and it's possible that you might have a term in there that's uh, squared or cubed or something like that. And that means that you have a, a, an eigenvalue of higher multiplicity. So here's an example of that. Let's work out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of uh, a 3 by 3 matrix that looks like 4, 2, 2, minus 2, minus 1, minus 4, 0, 0, 3. Okay, so step one is to look for the eigenvalues. And so for that one, uh, we look at the determinant of a minus lambda i. That's our characteristic polynomial. So I'm going to be subtracting lambda off the diagonal. So I have 4 minus lambda and minus 2 and 0. And then 2 minus 1 minus lambda. 0, uh, 2 minus 4, 3 minus lambda as the determinant that I need to compute. Um, I'm going to do this one by cofactors. So it uh, looks like the last row is a good one to expand upon because there's those two zeros. So let's see. So I'm going to have uh, a 0 plus a 0 plus a 3 minus lambda times, and then the sign for that position is positive 1. And then if I look at the, um, uh, the minor, I'm going to be crossing off that row and column. So I have 4 minus lambda 2, negative 2 minus 1 minus lambda. And this is going to give me a lambda cubed minus 6 lambda squared plus 9 lambda, and I can factor a lambda out of that, and I get um, lambda times lambda minus 3 quantity squared. And so here I have uh, lambda 1 equal 0, lambda 2 equals 3, and lambda 3 equals 3. And again, the order that I, or the, the way I number these does not matter. Um, but the fact that these two are the same right here, this is saying that the multiplicity of the eigenvalue 3 is equal to 2, because it shows up twice. OK. So that can determine sort of what happens next with the eigenvectors. So let's look at that part next. Eigenvectors. Let's get the uh, uh, first one out of the way. So lambda 1 equal to 0. So in this case, we're going to be row reducing or trying to find a basis for the null space of a minus 0i, which is actually just the original matrix A itself. So I've got uh, 4, 2, 2, minus 2, minus 1, minus 4, 0, 0, 3. And I row reduce that sucker. And I will spare you the details. Um, but after a couple steps, I ended up with 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Now, this, this is uh, not reduced row echelon form, but it is simple enough. It's close enough to it uh, because I'm only off by dividing that first row by half. Um, I can see from this what vectors are orthogonal uh, to this. So. If I take um, something that looks like, let's see, well, the, the second row is telling me that x3 is equal to 0. And then I just need to put something in the first two rows so that when I take the dot product uh, against this part here, it'll be orthogonal with this portion right here. So in order to do that, I can uh, switch the position of these and make one of them a minus. So if I do 1 minus 2, 0, for example. Now, you might be asking, what the heck did he just do there? Well, this is actually a trick that comes from, uh, it's, it's exactly the same thing as what you learned once upon a time 
when you've got a straight line with formula y equals mx plus b. And somebody asks you, um, how do you find the slope of a line that's orthogonal to that? So if it is perpendicular, what's the slope of that one that's perpendicular? And you remember you take the reciprocal and negate it. And so that's exactly what I've just done right here. How do you take the reciprocal? Well, you interchange the rise and run. And so that's swapping the, um, uh, the two and the one here. And then you negate it. So make one of them minus. Now, if you, if you put a, a negative in front of the one and the m, they cancel and you haven't done anything right. So you just want to put a minus sign in one of those two spots. If you don't like the shortcut, that's fine. You can do it the, the long way that we did before. Uh, let a third variable be um, free and solve for the equations and so forth. Um, but for me, my, my v1 is going to be, um, let's see, uh, well, how about minus 1, 2, 0? I can take it with whatever sign I want, so I don't know. It's a matter of artistic preference at this point. Uh, let's take a look at lambda 2, also uh, lambda 3, both of which are equal to 3. So now I'm looking at row reducing a minus 3i. And so now I need to subtract 3 off the diagonal. So I have 3, sorry, I have 1, 2, 2, um, minus 2, minus 4, minus 4, 0, 0, 0. And with just one row operation, I have 1, 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so now, because uh, this one has multiplicity 2, it's possible to have two rows of zeros here. So that's the significance of this example. And working out the solution from uh, this equation right here, which says x1 plus 2x2 plus 2x3 equals 0, uh, by letting x2 be free and x3 be free, um, I get to something that looks like um, minus 2s minus 2t s t, uh, which I can pull apart into s times the vector minus 2, 1, 0, and t times the vector uh, minus 2, 0, 1. So then that tells me that I get uh, two vectors. I'll take v2 to be minus 2, 1, 0, and I'll take v3 to be minus 2, 0, 1. And so I see that the eigenspace for 3, E3, this is actually going to be a plane because it is the span of two linearly independent vectors. Okay, and so, so now we have uh, found all of our eigenvalues and, and eigenvectors. Then, so you might naturally be asking yourself the question, uh, does the multiplicity of lambda being 2, like in this example, um, imply that we'll find two eigenvectors like we did in this situation? Well, the answer is no. And that's exactly the topic of the next m lesson.